Hi friends, Tracy here from the Sewing Channel. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome. Today, I have an interesting tutorial for you. We are going to think outside the box and make this awesome, cute little quilted door hanger. What makes this door hanger so awesome? It's made with outdoor furniture fabric. It won't fade in the sun like regular cotton will. The possibilities are endless. Now we're all gonna have little quilt door hangers on our front door. How cool is that? <laughs> Enough talking already. Let's get busy quilting outside the box. To make the letter D for my door hanger, I printed off a D on my computer and then I sort of traced it bigger using the original one as a guide onto a piece of paper. Then I grab my Heat and Bond Ultra Bond. This is the one that you don't have to sew over in order for it to stick. I traced it on the Heat and Bond. You see that was the bumpy side. Well, I want to trace it on the flat side. And so I traced it onto that and then I rough cut around it. Then I laid the bumpy side onto the wrong side of my fabric and then I just simply ironed it on. After the two pieces have been bonded together, I went ahead and cut my letter out on the actual line. Now I peel off the paper and reveal what's going to bond to our quilt. It's okay to set this aside because it won't bond to anything until you actually put the iron to it. Next, go ahead and cut out four two inch in width strips for your border. Your length of strips could be different depending on how big you cut your squares. For my low volume fabric, I fussy cut a bunch of these really cute cactuses out of this outdoor fabric. For my outdoor quilted door hanger, I used three and a half inch squares, 10 low volume and 10 dark. And as you can see, I kind of cut on the diagonal on some of the darker fabrics. For the back of the quilted door hanger, I thought these cactuses would be really cute to just go ahead and use the same theme on the back. You will also need some Pellon Flex Fusible Foam, and it only needs to be fusible on one side, and it needs to be the size of your quilt top, what it ends up being. Lay out your three and a half inch squares in a checkerboard pattern, just like you see here, and go ahead and sew across in the rows. Be sure though to iron your seam allowances in opposite directions so that we can nest as we sew the rows together. I will try and link everything that I use in today's video down in the description box just below this video. After each row has been sewn, be sure to give everything a good hot press. It is harder to press outdoor fabric, but it is doable. Be sure to use a wood clapper. That will help a lot. This is what you should have so far, a nice little checkerboard. Go ahead and trim up around that checkerboard if there's any pieces that didn't match up nice and flush. And then we're going to add the side borders first. Once the side borders have been sewn on, you're going to trim those up. And then we are on to put the top and the bottom borders on. And then you're going to trim those as well. Then we are going to iron that fusible foam onto this quilt top. Now it's time to iron on our letter. So with my letter, I had to use a pressing cloth over it because it was kind of like a faux leather type thing. I don't know, I bought it a while ago at Joanne Fabrics. It kind of gives it like a 3D effect too. So this is what it looks like after it has been ironed on in it. It sticks like glue, let me tell you. You don't have to sew on it, not at all. And then the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and put our free motion quilting foot on, and I'm going to free motion quilt and echo around this entire letter D. I have to tell you though, it was a lot different trying to free motion quilt on outdoor fabric as opposed to our quilting cotton fabric. It, even though it was different though, it was still a lot of fun. I love trying new things and I love things that are different. I did have a few skip stitches here and there. I wish I would have had a jeans needle because I think that would have worked out best. I did end up using my titanium needle. 
So anyways, I went ahead and I free motion quilted this flower and I did have a few skip stitches in there. So what I did was I had to go over it and over it and over it again to kind of give it that filled in look. Then I just went around the border a couple of times, just doing like a squiggly line, so to speak, all the way around. I do like how that free motion quilting ended up along the border. Next, trim off any excess foam all around the quilt top. Now you can trim the back to fit the quilt top exactly. Next, put right sides together and clip them. And then you're going to sew all around in a quarter inch seam allowance, but you're also going to leave an opening right there so that we can turn it right side out. You will also need two inch strips of fabric to make the hangers on the back of this quilt door hanger. Fold them in to meet in the middle and then fold again, just like you see me do here in the video, and then sew down one side, which essentially gives us a strip, and then I cut it in half and then we have two pieces for the door hangers. Don't be like me, I totally forgot about the door hangers then I sewed the corners up. So this is me unpicking those two top corners and once I get those unpicked, you will see I will set that little piece of fabric on the diagonal there right on the inside. I'll close it up and I will sew that corner up on both tops. And when we turn it right side out, those little pieces of diagonal fabric will hold our wood dowel rod. Trim off the corners and any excess and then turn your project right side out. The first thing I'm going to do is close up the opening that we made to turn our project right side out. I'm just going to turn the seam allowances inward and I'm going to clip it, take it to the sewing machine and just sew a row of stitching right on the side there. I decided not to put a row of stitching around the outside edge due to that squiggly line that was close to the edge. It was too much clashing. So what I did do was I ended up putting a top stitch, like stitch in the ditch right here as you see me right on the inside border and that helped connect everything together. Next we're going to slide the wood dowel right in the back of those little loops on the back of this quilt hanger. Who knew that we could make a little quilt door hanger, outside door hanger, out of outside furniture fabric? I sure didn't, not until I made this project anyways. This quilt door hanger will be easy to clean, wipeable, and it will never fade. That's awesome. Until next time on the sewing channel, take care.